With the non-avian dinosaurs being extinct, it's hard to know exactly how they behaved. And one thing that we're often curious about is exactly how they reared their young. One way we can look for clues is behavior in their closest living relatives. These include their fellow archosaurs, the crocodilians, as well as the surviving avian dinosaurs, also known as birds. Crocodilians and birds are both known for being pretty good parents. They both spend time and energy building and maintaining nests, incubating their eggs, and feeding and caring for their young after they've hatched. So it's not a big stretch to guess that dinosaurs exhibited pretty similar behaviors. It's important to keep in mind that dinosaurs make up a huge group of animals spanning almost 200 million years, so we don't want to generalize and act like they all had the same parenting style. For example, it's thought that at least some sauropods laid their eggs, then left the babies to fend for themselves, kind of like sea turtles crawling down the beach as soon as they're hatched. But we do have some pretty interesting evidence that quite a few dinosaur species were actually very good parents. One interesting case is the fossil remains of some North American troodontid nests that were studied in the late 1990s. The eggs in these nests were grouped in pairs, which implies that the females had two functioning oviducts, unlike birds, and produced two eggs at a time. These nests included around 20 eggs each, which is more than a single female could lay within the time inferred from the egg's developmental stages. So it was concluded that these nests contained eggs from multiple females. What's more, analysis of the adult troodontid, which was likely a stenonychosaurus, revealed that it was male. Therefore, we have a pretty interesting nesting strategy where multiple females lay eggs in a single nest and it's brooded exclusively by the male. This is an interesting strategy combining aspects of crocodilians and birds, which makes sense since dinosaurs are phylogenetically between those two animal groups. Perhaps the most famous dinosaur known for being a good parent is Myasaura. This dinosaur provided paleontologists so much insight, its name actually means a good mother lizard. This large hadrosaur was discovered in the Two Medicine Formation in Montana in 1978. The original find was a nest including the remains of eggshells, as well as 15 babies that were too large to be hatchlings. This nest was situated nearby to an adult individual, painting an almost too perfect image of a mother caring for her young. This discovery caused a lot of excitement and encouraged more paleontologists to study the area, which came to be known as Egg Mountain. All in all, over 200 Myasaurus specimens have been found. So much material has been unearthed of individuals at all stages of life that we have a complete understanding of how they grew from eggs to juveniles to adults, and how they interacted between generations. Myasaura lived in gigantic herds numbering in the thousands or even up to tens of thousands and nested in densely packed colonies. Each nest would contain 30 to 40 eggs incubated by the heat from rotting vegetation placed on top of them by the parents. When the babies hatched, fossil evidence shows that the baby's legs were not developed enough to start walking, but the wear on their teeth shows that they had plenty of food to eat. This leads to the conclusion that adults brought food to the nest to feed them. They lived like this for a year or two, tripling in size until they finally left the nest. Juveniles would grow to adulthood over the following years, protected by the herd, until it was time to start a brood of their own, and the cycle continued. Myasaura has provided paleontologists such comprehensive understanding of their lives and growth that we can use it as a reference for all other hadrosaurs, and indeed, dinosaurs in general. Another example of a dinosaur known for being a good parent is the Oviraptor, a small theropod from the late Cretaceous of what is now Mongolia. But Oviraptor didn't always have this reputation. The original specimen was found in close proximity to a fossilized nest of about 15 eggs. When paleontologist Henry Fairfield Osborne described it in 1924, he assumed it was a protoceratops nest, as protoceratops were common in late Cretaceous Mongolia, and he concluded that the theropod was preying on the eggs. He therefore named it Oviraptor, meaning egg thief, giving it something of a conniving scoundrel characterization in the public imagination. Then, in the early 90s, a few discoveries in the same geologic formation made paleontologists rethink their assumptions. The first was a fossilized egg containing an Oviraptor red embryo. This revealed that the nest found alongside the original fossil specimen was not Protoceratops, but the Oviraptor's own. The next illuminating discovery was that of Sidipati, a closely related oviraptorid sitting directly atop a similar nest. A handful of examples like this and similar nests were discovered in following years, and it became clear that these dinosaurs were actually nesting and incubating the eggs, the posture of the legs and arms protecting a circular formation of eggs similar to what large flightless birds do today. 
We often think of dinosaur fossils as remains of an animal whose skeleton was preserved after it died. But it's a profound realization that, given their deliberate posture, these fossils not only depict dinosaurs frozen in a moment of brooding, but that they in fact died trying to protect their eggs from whatever sudden sandstorm or mudslide caused the fossilization itself. Once thought to be nothing more than dumb, lumbering beasts, the parenting styles of these dinosaurs prove that they were anything but. Fossil evidence has provided us with invaluable insight that shows us the varying strategies they employed. Whether by gender-specific duties, being raised by the herd, or defending their young to the death against hopeless odds, it's clear that they were built to survive and endure from generation to generation, just like the animals of today. Hey everyone, I'm glad you're enjoying these unexpected dino lessons. If you're as passionate about dinosaurs as I am, consider checking out my Patreon at patreon.com slash unexpected dino lesson. When you join, you'll be able to request your favorite dinosaur to be featured, and it'll be up on social media within a few days. You'll also get exclusive previews of upcoming content, dinosaurs, and art not yet posted anywhere else on the internet. I really appreciate the support, and again, that's patreon.com slash unexpected dino lesson.